Hello and welcome to China's World of Steam, one of the last surviving and largest networks of steam railway systems in the world at the end of 2008. Preceding the dieselization of the wonderful Zhetong Line in 2005, China's steam is isolated to individual industrial locations throughout the whole of China. On the eve of 2009, these often remote industries were finally forced by the government under Xi Jinping to cease the use of such technology, a remnant of the industrial era that did not look well upon the current state of China. It was the end of the line for steam, and our last chance to take a look. Pan Jihua, in the Xishua province of south-central China, on the confluence of the Yinshua and Yelong rivers, has a population of 1.25 million people, and is also named after a flower. This would be the first avenue for our steam adventure. This part of China has a distinctly subtropical climate, and this particular factory and town are located in a valley, resulting in a nearly constant industrial haze. The building of the huge city of Peng Shi Hua only began in the late 1960s as the region was plentiful in both coal and water for the upcoming steelworks which began production in 1970. Pan Shihua Iron Work and Steel Company has grown rapidly and even remained relatively prosperous during the Cultural Revolution. Today it is the largest steelworks in southwest China, producing 5 million tons of steel per year. Steelworks, especially those of 1970s China, are, by their nature, some of the most dangerous places to work. Even empty ladle wagons are still hot enough to radiate considerable heat as they pass by. Full ladle wagons must be handled with extreme care, as any sudden movements could result in molten material flowing out. After the death of one Japanese visitor to Anshant Steelworks, splashed with liquid steel while standing too close to a passing locomotive, visitation is mostly disallowed at steelworks across the country. This giant site really is a city within a city, with continuous and full 24-hour action. The steelworks here has two operational blast furnaces. The three original furnaces from the 1970s have now been closed and replaced by these more modern, high capacity types, built in 2005.
All told, this plant produces some 5 million tons of steel per year and is the second largest producer of vanadium steel in the entire world. As well as moving molten ladle cars, another job for the steam engine in this facility was moving piles of molten slag through a short tunnel to the tip. China's booming economy has produced an almost insatiable need for steel, much of which will be used in the proliferating building industry. The capital cost of so much expansion has meant that until now it has been financially impossible to retire the entire steam fleet in China. However, diesels have recently begun arriving in more substantial numbers, making this a definite possibility as well as a requirement. The Panjihua Steel Company has recently purchased steel making facilities in Chengdu, and this will increase its output to nearly 7 million tons of steel per year. At the time of our visit, several new 2008-plate orange GK diesels had been added to the fleet, and the plan was to dispose with steam within the year. More surprisingly, the bulk of the steam fleet was in a very good state of repair, and it was obvious that the workers took great pride in keeping the locals as clean as possible, lest a government authority come while we were filming in order to reprimand for misrepresenting the cleanliness of the country. Thank you for watching, and in the next part of this series, we will learn about China's passenger steam.